What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, The Fourth Cannon. I'm back with another video. First things first, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe on this video. And make sure you guys follow my Instagram at The Fourth Ken. Shout out my guy, Lixit, for the beats. And shout out Infra RG for suggesting this video. So we're going to jump straight into it. So basically, what I like to say for mid phase, with phase in general, you want to really address the structure of it. So you want to establish it. So what do I mean by that? Notice how I'm setting in my first guideline. I'm not setting it in as if he were to be getting C cups. I'm setting it in as if he's not because we're not doing C cups on it. So you want to structure it differently. Notice how it's going diagonal. It's going with the shape of his head and it's dropping in the back. Now, one thing you guys may notice about my client, he does have a dry scalp only at the bottom though. Now this can be caused by just the weather changing. So. The area I'm at, I'm in Philadelphia, PA. So the area I'm at, you know, it was warm like two weeks ago and now it's just drastically cold. So this can affect, you know, a lot of your clients. Um, there's many different treatments. You can do oil treatments. Today, we're gonna be doing like, not really a deep treatment, but a quick fix. So I'm gonna be showing that at the end of the video. So right now we're actually taking his hair down with my detachable clippers. And this is the number two blade, but the number two blade on detachables usually cuts to like a one and a half, like in regular clippers. So yeah, that's what we're doing now. We're just taking it down. You do want to be careful with detachables. If you're not, if you're a beginner barber, I don't recommend them at all. They're really, what I like to say about detachables is they're all about math. So you have to be good with math and stuff like that. It's a numbers game. So. If you're a beginner, don't use detachables. This is not a beginner's tutorial. This is really an advanced tutorial because this isn't a simple haircut. Although it looks simple, it's really not. Right here, I'm using my wedge blade. So this is the first time that I used it in a video. What is the wedge blade? It's kind of like a different blade. If you look it up, the instructions aren't it. It says it gives like a seamless blend and it does do that. So notice how I set my first guideline in. Right now I'm erasing that first guideline. And how I'm erasing it is I'm putting my lever halfway and then I'm closing it. But notice how I'm using my corners to kind of get that line out. And with the wedge blade, you can pretty much fade out bald guidelines because the wedge blade cuts closer than the standard blade. So now I'm gonna grab my standard blade. So this blade cuts longer and I'm just really flicking. I'm just flicking it to kind of soften up the transition area so that when I do end up blending it out, it's easier for me. So just notice I'm barely going up, not even a quarter inch, I'm probably like a millimeter, just going up a little bit. And staying with my standard blade, I'm gonna have my one guard open now, I did have trouble on this blend. I should have kept the wedge blade the entire time, but I wasn't thinking. I was just trying to get angles correctly for the video. So this is the mistake I made. So my lever is open right here. And I'm not really going to pay for this consequence right now. I'm really going to have to struggle with this later on in the feed. So you'll see, you're, you'll see what I mean. Above that, I'm gonna take my long number one or my end as masters. And once again, I say this in every video, this cuts longer than the Babilis and the wall one. This cuts way longer. So if your client comes in and says, oh, I want a 1.5, you know, start out with the Andis. Don't just go with the wall because it's gonna cut shorter. Next, I'm gonna take my number two guard. So this is my long number two, but the lever is closed. And this is gonna pretty much blend the top of the fade in, the very, very top into the top of the hair. So we're working near his crown area in the back. This was a trouble spot for me, not with this guard, but below this. As you can see, he has like dark spots in his head. 
This just can be just from the density of the hair and how the hair grows. So next we're gonna take our one and a half guard with Babilis. Now this is the perfect guard because this can pretty much blend out those awkward areas. And that's exactly what, I, what it did here. It's really effective for fades. I really recommend this guard. And this also actually has their version of the 1.5 guard and that's a great guard too. This guard will definitely make your life easier when it comes to haircuts. It's not always necessary, like in tapers, I don't really use it that much, but in fades, to me, it's effective. So right here, I switched back to my wedge blade, and this is my one guard close. Notice how it almost erases that guy line. It cuts significantly shorter. So the, the lever's all the way closed, I'm just going around the head. I am slightly opening it up when I when you see me go up a little bit, but for the majority, the lever is closed. I'm just softening up this line so that I could come back and blend it out or attempt to blend it out with the zero guard. Now I have my zero guard, and this is where I made my mistake. So as you can see, I'm kind of flicking out, but I'm also going straight up in this area. My mistake was that I didn't go high enough with it. I kept it too low, and I had to pay for this consequence in the next step. So you, you will see what I mean. I should have went up higher. I was just trying to be safe, but I definitely should have went up higher, at least with the zero guard halfway but I was trying to keep it low. So this will not remove the guideline all the way. Now, if you do use the wall premium half guards, you will remove the guideline pretty much all the way. But I like to play it safe and use my and as zero guard just to kind of simplify it. But in this case, I kind of overcomplicated it. So like I said, this is not a beginner's tutorial. This isn't a, a dummy proof or easy tutorial. This is complicated. Now, this is the final step of the fade. I really liked how this fade came out. It's just not textbook. So I'm, I'm kind of all over the place with this fade, but I, I'm still gonna try and teach you guys how I fixed it. So this is my lever open. As you can see, I'm constantly switching guards out, playing with the lever. This is the last step of the fade. This is the detail process. This is the process where an advanced barber is gonna be able to complete this fade. You know, a beginner barber may get stuck and you know, they're trying to figure out what to do. You, you can't always go by the book. You can't always go by the script. Every client's head is different. This side was more difficult than the other side. You just gotta play it, play by play. Some clients, it looks better when you drop the fade drastically in the back, but this client, I like to keep it, you know, just a slight drop, but it's still difficult in the back. The back is one of the hardest spots in the spot that I'm working right now, um, because it just, sometimes people's head shape can naturally create like a shadow, which can make the fade look incomplete. So that could be a challenge. It could be very frustrating because you spend an hour on a fade thinking it's perfect and they get up and it looks like it's a huge dark spot when they put their their head back so it's, it's frustrating but if you're patient and you really take the time to really analyze your client's head shape and give them a haircut according to their head shape and also you know take into effect what they want but this client he wanted a mid fade so i was like you know what i'm gonna try and keep it up and not drop it drastically so i'm just finishing up this fade Doing my detail steps with the one guard, with the zero guard, and with my wedge bleed. 
And right now to get that bottom bottom guideline out, we're gonna take our five out blade. This was the clipper and the blade that we set our first guideline in with. So we're just gonna get it out with this. And it was a faint line, you can't, couldn't really see it on camera, but. And that's the fade, as you can see, it's faded. For the hairline, it's pretty straight to the point. I did spray hairspray just a little bit. And we're gonna be taking our Babilis FX trimmers and shaping them up. And as you can see, they hit, man. Crispy. So one thing I do wanna to touch on is the importance of conditioning your client's hair. You know, everyone always is quick to, oh, he needs to get his hair washed. Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes what a client really needs is a good condition because hair washing is just stripping the client's hair of the oils. It's cleaning it. But sometimes people who just like, say, take for example, my hair. If I just get a shampoo, my hair will still be itchy and uncomfortable. I need conditioning in my hair because conditioner adds that moisture back, you know what I'm saying? Into your scalp, not just your hair. You know, if you add a wave pomade or something, that's adding uh, some type of moisture back into the hair, but the scalp needs moisture. That's the important part. The scalp needs a moisture. So that's exactly what I did with this client. I washed and conditioned his hair. Right now we're using enhancements. And we're just spraying just enough. We don't want it to make, make it look too dark or too fake. We want it to blend in. So this hairline's pretty full, like it's, it's no complaints, it's full. Um, so yeah, we're just being modest with the enhancements. Right now I'm using my Easy Blade razor. Shout out to Easy Blade. Use my promo code, the fourth Ken, for 10% off your order. And a lot of people use the pencil to create like a contrast or an ash line. But me, I like to do it like the more organic way. Even though an ash line is still an enhancement, um, this is more of a natural enhancement. So as, you, as you can see, it looks like I used a pencil, but it looks like more natural and it's more precise. The pencil can kind of be thick sometimes. Last part you wanna do, freehand trim the hair. That's important. So remember when I said I would, you know, take care of the dry spots in the scalp? Right now I'm adding sea breeze. Now what is sea breeze? Sea breeze is an astringent. And this can moisturize the scalp. Now this isn't a, a, a deep clean or a, a long-term fix, but this will be fixed for like the rest of the day. His scalp is gonna look good now. As you can see, it looks better. I'm doing it on his hairline too. This is an everyday cut. You know, I can't get on here and show a perfect canvas every time, but sometimes you gotta show everyday situations. This is how my client came in. And this is how he's leaving, crispy. We gonna spray some oil sheen. And he's ready, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And it's the fourth Ken, and I'm out. Peace.